show you how to use wire in your plushies. So this is a plushie of Koro Sensei. I'm so happy with how this plushie is going. It's so cuddly. Um, basically, I've used wires in well, wire in these tentacles. So these tentacles can move around on the fingers, things like that. You can make them do all sorts of crazy stuff. So basically, I tend to use wire in plushies like this, where um, there's sort of parts of the plushie that are manoeuvrable. Um, so for example, the tentacles, these bottom tentacles, they do not have wire in because I don't feel the need for them. I used to, um, a while ago, actually put wire in my human plushies. I used to make like little wire skeletons, but I just thought that it's not really necessary. I have a video coming soon for full How to Make Kara Sensei, um, so look forward to that one. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. What you need to do first is just to have your patterns cut out ready um so whatever it is you have tail ears tentacles whatever plushie you're making um if you want to do do it in human plushies by all means but just have your templates cut out i will have a video for how i make chorus and say coming up in the future but i'm not going to be showing you this in this one video this is just purely for the focusing on the wire so just cut out all of your pieces make sure they're all ready and sewn together before you start doing anything with the wire so it's up to you what kind of wire you want to use um i personally prefer a thicker wire i've got this thin wire as well which i've just shown you in the video just to use it's oh i can't speak just to use an example because sometimes it's easier to work with because it's easier to bend than the thick wire i personally choose the thicker wire because it holds its shape easier you'll also need uh, some pliers as well they are very useful and I suppose the purpose of this video is to actually show you what I'm doing rather than tell you because it's really as simple as bending the wire around the shape of your piece that you've got that you're ready to stuff. You've just got to hold the wire up against it and bend it around all the areas where you want the wire to be. And just it doesn't have to be the neatest thing ever, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just get the basic shapes all around the areas. You can neaten it up with the pliers afterwards um, and the pliers also cut the wire as well. So that's where you can like end your sort of area <laughs> where you've, where you've um, molded your shape. Now depending on what shape that you've made and what your piece is, what your sort of thing you're putting wire in is like, um, it might be difficult to slot the wire actually into the piece. But it's doable because it's wire, it's bendy, you can move things around. So for example here with Kara Sensei's arm, I've overlapped the two fingers together so that they can fit through the gap of the wrist where the little bubble thing is. I don't know how to describe his hand. And then when they get through, you can use the pliers to then pull the circle shape out again because you've already molded it. It will sort of remember how you've shaped it. Um, and then you just sort of go through the hand and pull out all the wires to fit the shape of your piece. It will twizzle and twist around because wire likes to like not do as it's told. But when you stuff it, it you know, you know, set into place. <laughs> it's just a little bit fiddly to work with um, and if you're new to it you might find it a little bit of a challenge.
go ahead and just stuff the arm but as you can see I took the scissors off of it and it's just twisted it doesn't want to stay where it is but just be really patient with it use a chopstick to help get into the smaller areas and if the chopstick is too big use the end of a paintbrush that is what I do and just stuff your arm and repeat the process for the other arm and you'll have two bendable arms So the rest of this is just kind of me finishing the little pieces and connecting him all together so that when you sew the arms onto the body the wire is completely hidden and you've got two fully bendable arms for your wire plushie. So that really is pretty much it, that's how I make wire plushies. I hope you found this video helpful, thank you very much for watching, if you like you can check out my Instagram and my Facebook page for behind the scenes footage of things that I don't upload here on the channel um, so I'll see you in the next video bye bye